In this video we're going to talk about how the ultrasound machine takes a set of echoes and turns it into an image and there are really two things that we're going to talk about specifically which are the dynamic range for a particular image and how the grayscale curves are assigned and what exactly those mean. So just to refresh your memory we talked about how the ultrasound machine sends out a beam line and does that consecutively to generate the set of echoes that it's going to use to create the image but we didn't say anything about how it assigns the pixel values which are how black or how white each little dot in the image uh, is going to be to refresh your memory we talked about how the ultrasound machines sweep a beam line across the field of view and collect a set of echoes but we didn't talk about how those echoes relate to pixel values which are either black or white or somewhere in between the first thing to know is that the dynamic range of the transducer is actually more than what we can display with a grayscale image so that means that the transducer and the echoes that it collects uh, provide us more information than what we can display with a grayscale image. And so we have to find a way to represent the information collected within the set of colors. And so what, what I've just laid out here is two different compression models. So if you have echo strengths uh, with one being the least and nine being the most here uh, down on the first column, if you have very low compression, you're going to have grayscale values that are different throughout the whole range here. However, if you have a higher amount of compression, you're actually going to be lumping multiple signal strengths together into the same pixel value. And so if you have a higher amount of compression, you're throwing away more information and you have a smaller dynamic range. The other thing to think about is a grayscale curve and what this is is how the pixel values are applied along that set of compressed echoes that we talked about and uh, these are similar to things like window level for CT or lookup tables for nuclear medicine and PET. This is also analogous to if any of you are familiar with Photoshop uh, applying uh, a curve to your set of red green blue data for your image pixel data it's very similar where you can adjust what the black level is and where the white level is and then whether or not the values throughout that uh, grayscale are evenly applied over the image or whether they're applied in a non-linear fashion so I just gave uh, an example here uh, this is very similar to the compression diagram, but in this point, in this uh, example, I'm showing you the echo strength over here, again through 1 through 9. Uh, the first grayscale curve is very linear, so that you can see that we have a nice smooth transition from black to white. However, uh, this particular grayscale curve has much more accentuation on the black values here than it does on the gray or the white values. So you can see that this is not a linear application of the curve. And this is one of the things that when you're using the ultrasound machine you select from the machine and apply different curves. Basically you're trying to document with your image the most accurate information and sometimes you might choose to apply uh, another grayscale curve. How you would actually do this is highly dependent on the specific machine that you're using. One other thing that contributes to image quality is what's called the persistence and this just means that the ultrasound machine is going to take consecutive images and average them together for a saved image. So instead of just taking one set of beam lines from one end of the field of view to the other to create an image, it's taking two or three sets of beam lines and averaging those together. One of the drawbacks to this, though, is that you get um, motion blurring, especially if you have things that are moving very quickly. The big benefit to this is that you get decreased noise because you're sampling more and more information from the same amount of tissue. So in conclusion, we talked a little bit about how we take a set of echoes and turn them into pixel values that allow us to form an image.